The morning of August 24th. In the middle of the night, there was this big boom. And it woke me up. I thought our water heater had blown up in the basement. There was a big noise in the house shaking you. And when that thing went off, I sit straight up in bed and I could look out my window and I could see the plume of smoke coming. I wasn't sure where it was coming from. I knew it was the UW. Specifically, it was Sterling Hall in the middle of campus. When I got there, the firemen were doing their thing and it was amazing destruction. And we, as it got lighter, we could see pieces of tire all over. Just after 3.30 in the morning, a van loaded with homemade explosives blew up just outside Sterling Hall. A scientist and father of three young children inside, 33-year-old Robert Fosnacht was killed. This tragedy, which cost the life of one innocent student and injured others, is an insane act representing the twisted and distorted sense of values of a deranged mind and the utter contempt for processes of peaceful and orderly change. Frustrated that peaceful protests didn't seem to be working, the two men from Madison's east side who began 1970 with that air raid on the Badger ammo plant had struck again. This time, the New Year's gang, brothers Carl and Dwight Armstrong, were joined by two other men, UW students David Fine and Leo Burt. Their target was the Army Math Research Center, one of several departments in Sterling Hall. A series of articles in the Daily Cardinal had exposed military weapons research going on at AMRC and called for it to be stopped. So the radicals will wait and then something like this will happen. And to my mind, this kind of thing is inevitable. Part of the problem today, it seems to me, is the silent majority on the college campus that has been unwilling to try and, and isolate the radical. The Sterling Hall bombing sent aftershocks across the country. That bombing freaked people out in Washington, D.C. They thought this was the beginning of a real insurrection in the country. There was also an increasing sense of fear that, you know, hey, this stuff is actually beginning to happen. These people who want to bring the war home are bringing it home. Some felt and still feel that Robert Fosnock's death was the price of the failure of peaceful protest to end the war. Was it too bad that Robert Fosnock was killed? Yeah. You know, had it not been for that, that one death, I think people would have looked at that whole thing differently. I continue to be saddened and disturbed and distressed that uh, a person died, but I also understand the roots in that time. Rena Steinzor's understanding went beyond sharing an anti-war sentiment with the bombers. She knew Leo Burt and David Fine, knew them well, both were members of her Daily Cardinal reporting staff. I uh, thought they were both uh, interesting, uh, funny, uh, strong personalities, engaging. They were my friends. And I, I think they did not fully grasp what they were doing, the technical aspects of it. Three of the Sterling Hall bombers were arrested separately over the course of the next seven years. David Fine would hire Lester Pines as his defense attorney. The Wisconsin grad and former anti-war protester personally felt the bombing had done more harm than good. It really destroyed the mass, the mass anti-war movement on the campus. Through my representation of, of David, um, I learned all of the details about the bombing. But one detail has never been learned. What happened to the fourth Sterling Hall bomber? Leo Burt is, you know, in the wind. We don't have any idea where he is. Only about a week had passed since the bombing when students returned to the UW for the 1970 fall semester. When we got back after the bombing, uh, it was eerily quiet on the campus. It was right in the middle. I mean, Sterling Hall was right in the middle of campus. You could not really go to classes without walking around that area. And it just shook up all the thinking of, yes, protesting the war peacefully is a good thing, but this, where lives were taken. In Madison, I think before that, there was this sense that, uh, well, it was a university, 
you know, of course you'd have young people protesting and whatever, but to have somebody killed, um, an innocent person working in a lab, it was, I think it, it changed Madison forever.